The Radio Vet with Dr. Kelly is back on the air on CPL Radio. We're one of those radio stations that has a vet. We'll be right back. And we're back with uh, Dr. Kelly back in studio again. We had a little hiccup last week, and uh, we won't. We already talked about it, so you don't get to know what it is. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I think they can guess. <laughs> Let's just say she had to stay home for, for between for five, five and ten days. for five to ten days. <laughs> I think you guys can fill in yeah, the rest. I blame dirty, dirty clients. And it's, <laughs> we use the word patrons here, so you know. <laughs> so uh, now that we have you back. Uh, and you're feeling better, which is great. Um, what are we going to discuss today? I was going to talk about the all-important adrenal glands. It does sound important. <laughs> <laughs> Just by the very name itself. Right. Um, well, you know, that's actually a good point for those not in the know. What are the adrenal glands? The adrenal glands are some very important endocrine meaning hormone producing glands uh, that sit on top of the kidneys and hmm. do very important things okay, um, yes. with instructions from the pituitary gland in the brain. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see, the adrenal glands have two layers. There's the cortex or the outer layer and mm -hmm. the medulla or the kind of center Center layer, the sure. juicy center. The juicy center. <laughs> wow, I want one. <laughs> and uh, the outer layer, or the cortex, produces some important hormones, one of which is uh, our own natural cortisol. Okay. And uh, um, many people are familiar with um, cortisone, like topical cream or even injections into an arthritic joint for relief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And our bodies make, you know, our own natural version of that um, cortisol. And the adrenal cortex also produces um, hormones that are called mineralocorticoids, which, um, among other things, help uh, regulate and have an effect on our electrolytes in our blood, including mm -hmm. potassium, for example. Uh, and then there's the the important adrenal medulla, which is where adrenaline comes from. Ah, very good. Yes. That thing that we need so badly around this yes. time of day. <laughs> yeah. Our, <laughs> Get through the one day. One of our, our stress <laughs> hormones, our fight or flight hormone. Yes. So, I mean, mine, mine's overused. Yeah. <laughs> fight or flight. <laughs> I always opt for flight, by the way, for those of you at home wondering. Uh, so, okay. Well, yeah. um, so what among our pets, um, yeah. what can happen to these that will cause us alarm? So something that I um, see commonly in pet ferrets that we just kind of generically refer to as adrenal gland disease um, is a condition in which a ferret grows a tumor on one of their two adrenal glands. Mm -hmm. um, usually it's the left as opposed to the right um, for various anatomical reasons. I don't know. It just seems to happen. Sure. And um, when they produce, when they develop this tumor commonly, it will overproduce some other hormones that can come from the adrenal glands, um, estrogen and testosterone. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. We used to call ferret adrenal gland disease, um, ferret Cushing's, which is really incorrect uh, mm. because Cushing's disease or syndrome, both in people and in dogs, um, is an overproduction of cortisol, Okay, not uh, the sex steroid hormones. Right, right. But in ferrets, it's typically associated uh, definitely with an overproduction of testosterone mm. and sometimes estrogen. Okay. Yeah. And so what we see in these ferrets that have adrenal gland tumors, adrenal gland disease, is most commonly it's uh, recognized as a common cause of hair loss. So okay. hair loss that extends beyond just the tail when it gets up onto the body, too, in mm. ferrets, that's pretty much guaranteed to be adrenal gland disease. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's normal for ferrets to, um, at certain times of the year, lose a lot of the fur, sometimes even almost all the fur on their tail. 
Okay. But it grows back uh, as the season changes. And if it never extends up onto the body, it's considered normal. So they got this uh, nasty little skin whip at the end of that. Yeah. <laughs> a rat body. tail. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's not a very good selling feature. Uh, well, <laughs> ferrets have a lot of pretty good selling features. Well, that's they're good. That's they're good. brilliant little comedians. Indeed. You still have yours, right? <laughs> um, yes. One of the two still. Oh. They well. are elderly. Well, the one left is elderly indeed. now. Yes. Indeed. Indeed. Okay. Um, and uh, hmm. they both had adrenal gland disease. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, the treatment for that, well, I should finish symptoms. Um, yes. The other symptom that is common would be itchiness. Okay. Yeah. When they overproduce testosterone, their skin gets itchy. Oh, geez. So not okay. only do they go bald, but they're itchy bald. That's a bad uh, combo. I know. Yeah. And, and it, the, while the baldness doesn't affect their quality of life, <laughs> the itchiness definitely oh, does. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so that's a nuisance. That's something that affects their quality of life. So that's, in my opinion, you know, one of the main reasons to treat. Now, it can also give them problems by enlarging their prostate. Oh, geez. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they can have problems uh, from mm. that. So that obviously is important, too, if they suddenly can't pee. Do we have uh, a known cause? Is it uh, not drinking enough? Is it uh, what, what, you know? Yeah, what, good what question. Is, okay. So I believe that it has something to do with the fact that they are altered. They're neutered. They're spayed. Oh, geez. Okay. And apparently, unlike our dogs and cats, they don't tolerate that too well. Hmm. <laughs> but they also can't really be pets if they're not. They get a little uh, kind of crazy, don't they? Well, <laughs> they get extremely musky. More Ooh. so than they are, way yeah, right. more so than they are when they're neutered and spayed. So, so have you met an unneutered ferret? Who, I have, uh, yeah. You know, was a pet, and you're like, Ooh, you might want to, oh <laughs> want to take care of that funky I monkey. I remember <laughs> at my first job at yeah. Lakeside Animal Hospital when I was in high school. Uh -huh. um, there were one or two clients that bred ferrets that would bring in <laughs> these creatures. <laughs> that and uh, like I a mean, horror movie, yeah. And and then when they left, the room stunk for hours. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and to think they were living like that, you know? I know. It was like, like, oh, my God. How many absolutely reek. How many, like, Glade candles do they go through <laughs> every week? Gosh. <laughs> um, and then a couple, just a couple years ago, I went to a woman's house where she kind of had her own quote unquote ferret rescue like mm. privately where you know she would basically take unwanted ferrets and uh, oh. adopt out some when she sure. could but her whole house was filled with ferret cages oh boy and she got a confiscated intact full-grown male ferret oh boy these things are gigantic. <laughs> really? Oh my God! Like a they're size like of a Fiat. they're like five <laughs> times bigger when they're not neutered. They're like it's like an otter. Oh, crazy! It's huge. Wow. Yeah. I can see that being kind of cool. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, look at my ferret. Yeah, and he was he was neutered when I saw him, but okay. he, nonetheless he they a got while. to be sure. neutered after becoming full grown, which wow. does not happen with the pet ferrets. Extra cuddly. So, yeah, he was gigantic. I hope he was friendly. <laughs> he was now. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, good. I think he was a biter before he was neutered. Yeah. Oh, well, so, yeah. yeah. It's, uh... So, yeah. Wow. As but are most. <laughs> most pet ferrets are neutered and then what are what's referred to as descended. Okay, right, um, right. At a very early age. Uh, where they are produced. The vast majority of pet ferrets come from one place in okay. the U.S. called Marshall Farms. No, oh, interesting. Okay. And so all of your pet store ferrets um, would come from there okay. and would have two blue dots on one of their ears, which is a tattoo, one for spaying or neutering and one for descenting. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, so the, the, it's a Marshall Farms ferret if it's got the two blue dots. Hmm. They all come from that place. Those are tattooed <laughs> ferrets. Yeah. <laughs> they must be thrilled. Um, <laughs> so, um, so moving on to maybe our cats and dogs when it comes to adrenal issues. Well, let me go through treatment for ferrets. Oh, sure. Because sure. The, their problem is treatable. So either they can have surgery to remove the offending gland. Mm -hmm. And the remaining adrenal gland um, will hopefully remain normal and, you know, easily do the job of two. Sure. So surgery is curative. Um, and uh, again, it's it's nice that the majority of adrenal gland tumors occur on the left side of gland because that one's way easier to get at than the right. Oh, gotcha. Okay, right. <laughs> the right <laughs> adrenal gland in ferrets 
sits right on the vena cava. Oh, okay. And okay. it's hard to tease it off that Jeez. without ripping the vena cava. Oh, which no. Which is a bad thing. Oh, that is bad. Because <laughs> oh, that's gosh. a very large vein. Yikes. Um, and then otherwise, there's a non-surgical treatment, which also works really well. And this is what both of my ferrets had. Um, a An implant mm. of a... Um, anti-testosterone drug called suprelerin okay and so wow. basically you microchip them chip them with this implant yeah. and it lasts for several months okay yeah okay. and it um suppresses it um takes the excess testosterone out of circulation and so it gets rid of all the symptoms interesting yeah. okay wow so that's like nice. a major development so they grow their hair back yeah and they have more energy and they feel better okay okay yeah Boy, I don't see many, you know, it's funny. I see less and less ferrets around. I know, I yeah. Know, you, I mean, it's a rarity at this point. I don't see them at pet stores. I, it and... was one of those, uh, you know, situations where um, I think they, they increased in popularity and then slowly died down. Okay, Yeah. okay, because everyone got a whiff of them. <laughs> yeah, they got a whiff of them or, the, you know, they got they had their ferrets and they had their adrenal gland disease or their insulinomas yeah. oh, or their sure, other sure. kind decided, oh, okay, yeah. we've done that. Let's move we won't on. won't do that again. <laughs> Time for a nice hermit crab. Um, <laughs> so so yeah. um, another pet who, who develops adrenal gland issues would be our dogs. Uh -oh. Dogs get Cushing's disease. Mm. Yeah. And there are some breeds that are more prone to it than others, but any dog with adrenal glands can get Cushing's okay, disease. Okay. Yeah. If you, if you got them, you could get it. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got it. All right. And so, so dogs who develop Cushing's disease, um, it can be from three different causes. One, there is iatrogenic, meaning human caused um, or drug caused, I should say, oh. Cushing's, oh, no. Cushing's syndrome. And that occurs in dogs who are taking steroid hormones for various reasons for a long term oh my so it's it's not that the adrenal glands are overproducing steroid hormones it's that we're giving them to them and and they're getting so much too much too long and they develop the same symptoms as a dog with actual natural cushing's disease what, what obviously the... that's reversible right you wean them off the steroids slowly what are dogs doing on steroids for so long outside of like um, being bodybuilders I mean, usually <laughs> well no this these these steroids Steroids are um, not anabolic steroids. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they are anti-inflammatory and immune-suppressing steroids. So okay. it's usually for an autoimmune condition in wow. which we need to suppress the immune system, and steroids are good at that. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. And so there are alternatives, of course. They're just more expensive than steroids. Okay. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but oh, ain't that America? <laughs> steroids have so many side effects that really it's better to be on something else if you sure, can. <laughs> yeah. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so iatrogenic or you know artificially caused Cushing syndrome hmm. happens. Um, then there's also natural, which either is caused by a pituitary tumor in 80 to 85 percent of naturally occurring Cushing's disease in dogs. It occurs because of a tumor growing on the underside of the brain on the pituitary gland, okay. which is producing too much of the hormone that signals the adrenal glands to do their job. Okay. So the adrenal glands are normal, but they're responding to an abnormally high stimulus. Hmm. Yeah. And okay. um, yeah, that would be uh, the main cause. A lesser common cause in 15 to 20 percent of cases would be a primary adrenal gland tumor mm. in the dog, which can either be benign or malignant. OK. Yeah. So in the case of the adrenal gland tumor, the preferred treatment would be surgery to yeah. remove, again, the offending gland. Sure, sure. And hope, you know, if it's benign, fantastic, you're cured. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you can go on and have a normal life. Yeah. Um, but in 80 to 85 percent of cases, it's a pituitary tumor. And most of the time, these are very tiny tumors that mm -hmm. are, you know, they're not causing local problems from occupying too much space. Okay. About... Uh, five percent, five to ten percent of the time, they are larger pituitary tumors, and they will eventually cause neurologic symptoms too, oh such boy. as such as seizures. Okay, jeez. Yeah. So scary stuff. Yeah. So in some, um, especially European countries, they do commonly remove pituitary gland tumors from dogs with Cushing's disease. That's not common in the U.S. That's not. It just hasn't caught on. 
Is that a uh, pr- yeah. price-based thing? or is Maybe, it, uh, yeah. I'm yeah. not sure. Or it's also just that there's so few veterinarians trained to do that oh, okay. that it's, you okay. have to look far and wide and travel probably look for in order specialist. to have that done. <laughs> yeah. You might have to go to Holland. Yeah, I don't know. say you have to go to uh, Dusseldorf. Yeah. Um, okay. There is very successful <laughs> medical treatment, though. Okay. You know, for either adrenal gland or pituitary gland um, origin, yeah. Cushing's disease. Um, the older medication that's been around for a long Long time is called mitotane that is probably still used in a small number of cases that don't tolerate um, the newer safer drug but it interestingly developed kind of accidentally as um, an offshoot of DDT well that's surprising <laughs> yeah so when DDT was being tested yeah, oh <laughs> before boy. being a, you know commonly used as what a as pesticide. A pesticide yeah, yeah. A very dangerous one they discovered that when they tested it on you know exposed dogs to it as part of the test that it destroyed their adrenal glands oh good lord okay and so there we go they held on to that piece of information <laughs> and eventually discovered they could use it you know in a very carefully controlled manner in humans with adrenal gland tumors interesting okay. uh-huh. and so here we are we still can use it Um, oh my gosh and i think it is still used um for various uh, adrenal gland disorders even in humans um in dogs it's no longer the treatment of choice um simply because it's um it has more side effects than uh trilistane which is our now our preferred treatment um it has more side effects and Mm -hmm. you're more likely to accidentally give them too much and give them the opposite of Cushing's disease, which is Addison's disease, Oh boy! which is a lack of adrenal gland okay. hormone, uh, which can cause terrible things to happen, including shock and sudden death, oh even boy. in extreme cases. It's all about balance, isn't <laughs> yes. it? Oh my goodness. You need to have some cortisol in your body or you will be sick. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so, um, Critical. You know, yeah. So nowadays we mostly use um, trilostane, which is Safer, although you can still turn somebody into an Addisonian if you're not careful enough with it. <laughs> Addisonian? Yeah, that's what they're called when they have Addison's disease. They, they are Addisonians. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> not a club I want to join. I know, yeah. No, you don't. I think JFK was one. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, okay. There um, you go. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so there is successful treatment. Dogs with adrenal gland tumors who are in medical treatment um, can expect about a year Dogs with pituitary, you know, small pituitary gland tumors who are successfully managed can basically live their normal life. Okay. All yeah. right. So, it so is, it's not the kiss of death or it's anything. Not, yeah. yeah, it's not. And it's, um, I don't know, some, somewhat common as a cause of um, elevated liver values when we're doing, mm. you know, blood work. I have one almost 13-year-old yellow lab uh, who last fall we discovered she had elevated liver values and we didn't know why because she didn't have any other symptoms. Mm. Oh, she's got symptoms now. Oh, dear. <laughs> she oh, looks okay. like She looks like a cushionoid dog. So we are <laughs> doing testing her for Cushing's very shortly. Addisonians and Cushionoids. Cushionoids, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Playing this yeah. Saturday on and so football. That's, that's actually, you know, what does a dog with Cushing's look like when they're untreated? A- indeed, that is a good question. They will develop typically a very pot-bellied, low-hanging gut appearance because chronically high cortisol weakens muscles, including the abdominal muscles. And so then their abdomen kind of stretches out and droops. Plus, it makes the liver unhappy, and so the liver is large. Hmm. And in my dog, her belly is real droopy. She looks oh. like Winnie the Pooh. Oh, jeez. And um, <laughs> yeah, her liver is gigantic. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So gigantic. she's an Addisonian, or a, she has uh, Cushing. She's a Cushing. I, I mean, I I haven't done the proper test yet, but she's got Cushing. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy. How, and how old is she? Uh, twelve. Okay, so yeah. things like that do happen when you uh, yeah get older. Um, yeah, most dogs with Cushing's are middle aged to senior. Interesting. And so other symptoms would be they become ridiculously thirsty. Okay. So they drink a lot, pee yeah. a lot. Yeah. They will jokingly one of the tests for Cushing's is will they jump through a flaming hoop to get to food <laughs> because it also greatly increases their appetite oh, okay yeah. okay um is it something that happens in larger dogs versus smaller dogs or is that not a i don't think so okay. no Mm-mm. um so I'm, you know 
poodles are one of the breeds that are more prone to it oh, they are. especially okay. the especially the smaller ones i do believe mm. but there's it happens in every okay. every breed yeah so i keep thinking my rat terrier might be um, uh, immune but i maybe oh, okay. not maybe not so <laughs> cushings having cushings about five percent of dogs will also develop diabetes because when mm. your cortisol level is too high it messes with your ability to control your blood sugar okay um, it will also, in many dogs, cause a, a very obvious thinning of the hair. Okay. So they can have uh, basically normal hair on their heads, but very thin, almost bald on the rest of their body mm. in extreme cases, okay. and the pot belly. And then they can also develop something called calcinosis cutis, which is um, a plaque like, uh, very red looking, angry looking, but non painful, just hideous looking um, mm. skin condition. Oh, geez. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right. Yeah. So it's so, the side effects of having it are terrible. Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay. And so uh, what about our feline friends? Is this a possibility for them too? Not as far as I've ever heard of. <gasps> Interesting. It's not something the cats do. <laughs> wow. They, they just have no interest whatsoever. Nope. And, they have no interest in this like, whatsoever. <laughs> no. We're no cushionoids. We're no Addisonians. Yeah. We have no interest. <laughs> one final um, rare adrenal gland type of tumor mm-hmm. that can happen, again, as far as I know, just in dogs, but who yeah. knows, maybe in cats too, because it is rare. Um, a pheochromocytoma is a tumor of the juicy center of the adrenal gland oh sure sure yeah, may, yeah causes them to have high adrenaline okay yeah okay mm-hmm. hmm. yeah is that and again uh treatable with uh medication or just surgery in just that surgery case in that one. yeah okay. just surgery in that case hmm yeah. is that also one of those like one day one year or life full lifetime uh honestly it's so rare i really am not that familiar with it okay. other than it causes them to have you know, chronically high blood pressure and all okay. the side effects from that. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So high heart rate, high blood pressure. You know, it's like they're high on adrenaline all the time. <laughs> so it's bad. Anxiety one. dogs. Yeah. <laughs> I think, oh dear. Well, great. Well, okay. I I, le- I learned something today, which is fantastic. I think that's what the radio vet is all about. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what's the main symptom you should be looking for if you are most concerned about something like this? What would what would be the uh, one thing? for for dogs? Yeah. It would probably be the excessive thirst, excessive thirst. and okay. urination. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. You know what to do, folks. If you see anything like that, get on the horn and call Dr. Kelly <laughs> 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 or someone like her. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Dr. Kelly. Yeah.